Our service begins on page 281 of the Green Book of Alternative Services. Page 281. Page 281. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but do you not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such a fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourselves from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly, your vindicator shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your, your guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of the streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank uh -huh. 
yourself know whereof we are made. You remember that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is
Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give arms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give arms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into the room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, when moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I had an email this afternoon from a friend that uh, a man named Jack, uh, a beloved former spiritual director to both of us, uh, had died a few days ago. Jack must have been about 90, so his passing is not so surprising. Jack was a very gentle, loving, and above all, wise disciple. And my friend says that he might just begin to believe that the saints in glory prayed for us, now that Jack is one of them. One time when I was struggling deeply with an issue, and unable to resolve it, no matter how hard I reflected upon it, Jack asked me, do you suppose, what do you suppose God thinks about your inability to come to a conclusion on this matter? And I can't remember what I said to Jack, but I remember what Jack offered me. God knows how we're made that we are human, and God doesn't expect us to be able to figure everything out. Jack was paraphrasing Psalm 103, which we sang a few moments ago. God knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. And to me, these are words of comfort. 
For God knows that left to my own devices, I can't figure everything out, that I make messes of things, often unintentionally, though sometimes possibly intentionally, sins of commission and omission. The Greek word for sin means missing the mark. Sin is anything that ruptures relationship with God, with others, with myself, with creation. I sin, you sin, we all sin. And God knows we sin. And more than that, that we're caught up in a web of sin, sometimes of our own making, sometimes of the structure of the society in which we live. But God is prepared to do something about it on our behalf. We cannot achieve our own salvation, our own forgiveness, make everything right by any amount of prayer or fasting or almsgiving, no matter how hard we try during Lent. And Jesus has stern words for those who try to fix everything themselves, who try to earn their way into heaven. He takes <coughs> on the religious elite, the Pharisees, who demonstrate, or at least try to, who demonstrate their goodness and their piety by announcing their large charitable donations or offering long prayers in public or looking glum when they're fasting. And so instead of trying to hopelessly save ourselves from sin, Jesus invites us simply to admit our sins and failures and to turn to God to receive God's forgiveness and mercy. For salvation is God's free gift to us through Jesus' death and resurrection. As the psalmist says, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For God knows how we were made. He remembers that we are but dust. In her book, what Jesus said about failure, what Jesus said about sin, mistakes, and messing up, Emma Ineson writes, to admit that we commit sins, we are part of sinful humanity, we are all sinners, is to join in what Dietrich Bonhoeffer calls the fellowship of the undevout. Those who are so aware of their own failure and need of redemption that pretense is not required and the mercy and grace of God takes center stage. So as you confess your sin, as you receive your ashes this night, remember that God knows you are but dust and yet loves you through and through. And may any Lenten disciplines, habits, practices that you take on during the season, may they draw you closer to our Savior Jesus Christ and to one another, that all of us may know more deeply God's grace, God's mercy and love, all of us here today in this fellowship of the undevout. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Dear friends in Christ, every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We began our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, an ancient sign speaking of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy event by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. And now, may the God of mercy transform you by his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain. 